Pre-game is presented by Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss. Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss offers area residents good health through chiropractic care. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Cavalier Stadium here in Coldwater, where tonight WSN has the Midwest Athletic Conference Championship game. The undefeated Marion Local Flyers and the undefeated Coldwater Cavaliers. My name is Mark Shine. It's my pleasure to do play-by-play. Coach John's will be beside me, and Coach, this is a week you don't have to get your players' attention at all in practice. <laughs> it's the week that I think everyone has been looking forward to. You tried not to overlook the, uh, the weeks before that, but when the schedule came out and cold water, Marion Local Week 10, we all were hoping that this would be the case that's happening tonight. It is, and John's got a keys for us. Go through the keys, John. Yeah, for both teams tonight, we're just going to look at the keys for the game. and explosive plays. Inevitably, whoever tackles well and does not give up big plays is going to put themselves in position to win. In any game of this magnitude, of the battle of the trenches, whoever wins the line of scrimmage is going to win this game. I know Marion Locals are going to try to establish that running game. Coldwater is going to try to stop them. Whoever wins inside is going to probably come out of here with a win. But special teams, Mark, you know, if you look at these games, missed extra points, punt blocks, uh, returns, field position, it could be pivotal at the outcome of this game. Your special teams might be even more important because it's windy here tonight too, and that could have effect as well with special teams play. Mary Local, they're 9-0. They're ranked number one in Division 6. Coldwater, they're 9-0. They're ranked number one in Division 5. Like always, it's for the Midwest Athletic Conference Championship, and we've got it coming up next. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Pre-game is presented by Locks Chiropractic and Weight Loss. Locks Chiropractic and Weight Loss offers area residents good health through chiropractic care. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Cavalier Stadium here in Coldwater, where tonight WSN has the Midwest Athletic Conference Championship game. The undefeated Marion Local Flyers and the undefeated Coldwater Cavaliers. My name is Mark Shine. It's my pleasure to do play-by-play. -play. Coach John's will be beside me, and Coach, this is a week you don't have to get your players' attention at all in practice. <laughs> it's the week that I think everyone has been looking forward to. You tried not to overlook the, uh, the weeks before that, but when the schedule came out and cold water, Marion Local Week 10, we all were hoping that this would be the case that's happening tonight. It is, and John's got a keys for us. Go through the keys, John. Yeah, for both teams tonight, we're just going to look at the keys for the game. and explosive plays. Inevitably, whoever tackles well and does not give up big plays is going to put themselves in position to win. In any game of this magnitude, of the battle of the trenches, whoever wins the line of scrimmage is going to win this game. I know Marion Locals are going to try to establish that running game. Coldwater is going to try to stop them. Whoever wins inside is going to probably come out of here with a win. But special teams, Mark, you know, if you look at these games, missed extra points, punt blocks, uh, returns, field position, it could be pivotal at the outcome of this game. Your special teams might be even more important because it's windy here tonight too, and that could have effect as well with special teams play. Marion Local, they're 9-0. They're ranked number one in Division 6. Coldwater, they're 9-0. They're ranked number one in Division 5. Like always, it's for the Midwest Athletic Conference Championship, and we've got it coming up next. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Cavalier Stadium. It's undefeated Marion Local. It's undefeated Coldwater for the Midwest Athletic Conference Championship. My name is Mark Shines. It's my pleasure to do play-by-play. Alongside Coach John Jervy. John, let's talk about a very serious injury that took place. Well, let's look at our officials first of all. There's Joe Lippio, and it will be our head official, and you can see the rest of that crew that we will have this evening. And while those are up, pretty de de devastating injury this week that took place in the game you had last week. Yeah, and last week, Marcel Blasting game went down pretty early in the game, and uh, he when he went down, it was pretty obvious that he was, he was hurt. And so uh, we've heard tonight that he's... Uh, had some uh, issues and had a surgery on his leg this week, and we've seen him on crutches, and they're hoping to get him back maybe in three to five weeks. But uh, major blow because he was not only uh, the leader of this team, but the leader in so many statistical categories of the MAC right now. And so, um, you know, Braylon Harlemert is going to take his spot at quarterback. So we're going to see how that cold water offense is able to keep up with that Marion local defense Here's now. Here's Tim Goodwin and his resume coming into this evening. What a career he has had, and you can see how well the Flyers have played this year. They have had six shutouts. They gave up 16 to New Bremen and seven to Wapak, seven to Versailles. Here's Coldwater, and they have been an offensive machine this year as their low score this year. Their low is 31 against Bell Fountain, and they have been putting points on the board. And again, that was with a different quarterback. Here's kind of the last meeting. That was a year ago, and typical of these games, John, is very close, well, well played game. <laughs> well, and I, I think the statistical part is what got me looking at that this week is they're very similar. And, uh, you know, you're not going to see either team score 38, and you're not going to see either team score three. So something's got to give tonight. Coldwater won the toss. They will kick off. And the ball is headed into the hands of Adi. This is Kyle. 
And Kyle's hit wrapped the 30-yard line and the 35, 37, still going to the 40. So good field position right away from Arian Loco. Yeah, I think that's about as good as you want to be right now, close to the midfield. Uh, you know, I think Marion Local is going to, you know, they, they're kind of a they're kind of a multiple offense. They're going to do a lot of different things tonight. But, uh, you know, you're going to see them try to establish that run game early, Mark. As it says here, the wind is down to 11. It is blowing behind the Coldwater Cavaliers and into the face of the Marion Local Flyers. It has gusted up to 17. But it's a lot better now, John, than it was an hour ago. Phew, I thought, you know, it was going to play a pivotal part in this game. But I think it's calmed down enough that it's not going to be a factor. The quarterback is Tate Hess. He wears number 10 in the backfield along with him is Darren Meyer. He wears 24. Two receivers go to the left. This is Hess to throw on first down. Blitz off the corner. They pick it up. Meyer picked it up and throws it out. And it's thrown low. Is it caught? And looking for a signal, it is not. It will fall incomplete on our opening play. Yeah, I think the first thing you notice right away is Coldwater being aggressive on defense, playing zone against the two receivers at the top and playing man coverage on the bottom side here into the field and bringing up five linemen, typically a four-man front, but bringing up five linemen uh, to match up man-to-man. -man. Let's look at some numbers. Tate Hess is 57 of 93, and in those 93 passes, he's thrown one interception, 832 yards, 12 TDs. And we'll talk about Meyer's numbers in just a moment. Meyer and Adi in the backfield. This will be Adi. He's going to sweep left. And room for Kyle Adi. And a lot of room for Kyle Adi. He's still running. Kyle Adi head up the sideline. Can they catch him? And they do. They grab him from behind. And that was Luke, uh, Jack Broering who ran him down. But we have right away coming out of this a first down. And that is a Union Bank first down. Well, one of the things I love about this is it looks like Marion Local from about 2005. They get into a power eye. They get the ball on a sweep to Adi. Uh, that's an old Delphi St. John's play that they called the O. Quarterback's actually one of the lead blockers, just running power to the left. Adi breaks a big one. We talked about explosive plays early. Mark, how pivotal it's going to be in this game. All the way to the eight-yard line of the Cavaliers. This is Meyer behind the block, and Meyer pushes forward. Let's give you his numbers. He pushes the ball down to about the four-yard line. He got into the end zone. He shoved his way in. Yeah, he just didn't stop. His, he did not. His feet kept moving. The knees kept chopping. You've seen him, that forward progress did not stop. You'll see it here on the replay. Great blocking up front and breaking tackles and pushing people into the end zone. That becomes a touchdown, an Allen Davis insurance touchdown. Your solutions provider specializing in, specializing in auto, home, business insurance, and more. And now on for the PAT attempt is Carson Bills. He wears number 11. PATs tonight are sponsored, and we got a flag. Our PATs are sponsored by Wright State Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lightlake.wright.edu to apply today. Yeah, hey, I think Coldwater's just had a little bit of an encroachment on that uh, first uh, uh, PAT, and, you know, there's still nerves out here, and obviously a big play, and, and so uh, they're just going to go. Looks like they're just going to go ahead and try it over again here. I don't think they've moved the ball though, Mark. It didn't seem like maybe they. Well, it doesn't seem like they got a lot of bodies in our way from That's here. Right. Well, that was a red down, red zone touchdown score too. Our red zone is sponsored by Neecamp Farm Market, your one-stop shop since 1998. State Route 128, eight miles south of Salina. Here's Bills to try. And Bills kicks the ball through the net and very quickly into this one. We have played just 49 seconds and the Flyers are on top, 7-0. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's game is presented by Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. The premier sponsor for the Marion Local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining and assembly needs, call OPAC. Wow, a stunner, John, 49 seconds into this one. Well, immediately Marion Local got the momentum that they wanted. You know they wanted to, to set the tone early and to establish that run game, and we immediately seen them uh, move people up front and make a big play and get uh, first on the scoreboard tonight. So deep is for the Coldwater Cavaliers, Parliament, and Durer. This ball will head into the hands of A.J. Harlemont. Up the sideline he goes, and he gets rocked right at about the 20-yard line. Is that number 14 on the stop, I think, Landon Arling? Yeah, Landon Arling just came down and made a great play uh, in, in knocking Harlemont back and really giving uh, uh, Marion Local good starting position defensively. And, 
you know, if you look at where they finished, you know, you talk about Marion Local, big on offense, doing a lot of great things on special teams, but their defense is really the key to their team, only giving up three points a game mark, and just that's going to be the interesting matchup tonight is Coldwater offense against this Marion Local defense. 60 yards, three plays, 49 seconds for the opening touchdown. Here's the quarterback now, A.J. Harlemant. Came in and played two and a half quarters last week, and very quickly the opening run is by Ebbing, and he gets snowed under. Yeah, it looked like Drew Seitz there, the uh, linebacker, outside linebacker in this 3-4 defense. Cam comes down and just closes in and really has uh, uh, did a great job of make, coming in and making that play. And, you know, Harlemer, uh, Braylon Harlemer getting his really his first start of the year at quarterback. It's going to be interesting to see. I know last week when he came into the Versailles game, Mark, he really essentially had no snaps at all. Even during practice, right. Coach Otten said no, no snaps. So he's, he's got a week of practice under his belt at least this week. He was 13 of 24 with two picks, 169 yards and a couple of touchdowns last week. He's going to break containment up the middle, and he's got a first down yardage over the 30. And I like that play call because, you know, most defenses are designed that you're, you're not going to cover the quarterback. They're kind of designed to keep your lineback linebackers spied on those quarterbacks. But uh, those the quarterback draw in the spread offense is one of the toughest plays of defense. And Braylon Harlan did a really nice job of uh, allowing that play to develop, letting his blockers uh, kind of sell the play fake, uh, and then getting that first down, big Thir first down. 13-yard pickup for a Union Bank first down. Coldwater on their own 34. Braylon Hardeman will look to run up the middle and more yardage for him. This time he's up near yet another first down as he dives forward. That is another Union Bank first down. Yeah, and you know, Coldwater, what, what they really want to do is they want to put the ball in the quarterback's hands and, and put, the, put the offense on his shoulders. Blasting game, uh, he was over 1,000 yards rushing, over 1,000 yards passing. And, you know, now Braylon Harlemer, they're going to ask the same things of him. They have two really uh, formidable running backs in Jack Ebbing and T Cody Depweg, but, but you're going to see Braylon Harlemer do a lot of different things tonight. And a big offensive line as well to run behind. Here's handoff. This is diving forward. This time is Ebbing. Gets a couple to the 46. In a game like this, uh, ball control is going to be something that – I think it's going to be important. Obviously, both teams would love to get a big play, but I think just possession of the football is going to be huge. And um, when you can pick up first downs and keep your defense off the field, I think it could be pivotal come late in the game. Ebbing sets up in the backfield again along with Braylon Harlan. Shifts to his right hip. Tri trips go to the right. He'll run right up the middle again and miss, make the first guy miss. It gets right around midfield. That's going to leave about third and four. Both defenses come out aggressive. You know, Marin Locals uh, coming out in press coverage. They've got both uh, corners locked up on those outside receivers in their face. Basically, their backs turn to the football, so they're playing man coverage. Um, they're going to come out and try to be aggressive and, and see who can slug this out the most. Third and four, Cavaliers on their opening drive of the football game. Quick pass out. It's caught. And spinning out of bounds is Evan Harlemert. That would be Braylon's cousin. And so we get our first completion. And we get a Union Bank first down. Move the sticks. When you think of Coldwater's offense, you think of big plays, you think of you know uh, posts across the middle. But what I found is that they love this simple out route or this hitch route, and they love to look for Evan Harlemer. Whenever they need a big play, whenever they, they need somebody to, to come through and give them a, a little bit of a push, he's the guy, uh, number one on the field. So I like that play call right there to get that first down. It's a good confidence builder for your new quarterback too. Harlemer to throw again. Snap throw over the middle. It's caught. This time he puts it in the hands of A.J. Harlemer, his twin brother. And that's a completion down to the 38-yard line. And, you know, if you just say Harlemer, Mark, <laughs> you're going to be about 80% yeah. right tonight. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty incredible what these guys do. And, you know, we, we've heard the stories. We've, 
we've uh, kind of, I wouldn't say gone through what they've gone through with this community, but, yes. y you know, people know the story, people know the situation, and you can only root for these kids, you know, what they've all been through and, and how they've handled it, and uh, it's just remarkable to see these kids out here competing at this level. Play, play number eight of this drive. Harlemert will run up the middle. He's going to bounce it to the outside, and this time he gets snowed under. Eifert was there. And I think it's going to be our second penalty of the yep. game, but first, you know, on a on an offensive play, and it looks like they're going to catch Coldwater with holding. Yeah, it would have been right there, uh, right in front of us. Uh, looked like the uh, uh, Keel Wenning got a little bit more uh, shirt than what he should have got. It was great, a great block, <laughs> but uh, looks like he uh, was a pancake and a and a tackle all in one. So we will go back to the 50-yard line. They need to get to the 34 now here on second down. And I think in games like this, those those little mistakes or penalties, or the, the margin of error is very, very little. You, you can't make those kind of mistakes and put yourself in, in big you know posi in positions where you have to get big chunks to get a first down. Ebbing switches sides of the formation. Harleman's by, by himself in the backfield and will throw. Looks, looks. And finally tucks it and runs, and it's going to get a couple out of it. Well, I, I see some really good coverage by Marion Local. I mean, that uh, it's probably hard to see on the replay, but you got guys rerouting all over the place, and, and they really contain, uh, stayed within that coverage, but really impressed with Braylon Harlemert's poise. You know, he, he like we talked about, inexperienced the quarterback. He didn't get flustered. He didn't, you know, throw a pass he shouldn't throw, and he just kind of hung back there and, and waited and then made a good decision uh, to go ahead and run the ball. Now he faces third and 14 from the flyer, 48. Got Ebbing in the backfield along with him. Ebbing shifts to his left hip. Comes a blitz off the edge. And he breaks the first one. He's got some room to run. Ebbing misses the first half. Oh, ball's loose and the ball's out. This is Meyer headed up the sideline. Is it going to be a scoop and score? It's not. They're going to knock him out of bounds. But a big play by the Flyers. Well, we talked about uh, not only big plays on the field as far as special teams and explosive plays, but turnovers are just going to be key and you see Harlow make something out of nothing he's out there making a good play but just right there the the nice job by Marion Local Landon Arling we've heard that name twice now coming in there and making a big play and and the ball squirts loose and Darren Meyer right there Johnny on the spot they would say and gets a nice pickup and boy the momentum right in Marion Local's uh, favor right now this drive will start on the 21 yard line of the Cavaliers Kind of holding the football in a different hand might have helped, right? Well, you should have it in hand. the outside hand, yeah. you know, and it was on the inside. No, the so it was pretty good anyway. <laughs> There's Adi and Meyer in the backfield. This will be Adi off left tackle. Bounces it wide. He has already had one big run today, and he gets run down from behind by Cody Deckwig. Well, now's the time for Marion Local to establish that run game. They've, they've got a nice uh, uh, lead here. Um, early in the game, they've got great field position on the turnover, and so uh, you can see guards pulling and, and linemen blocking down, and um, it was a nice run by Kyle Otte. You're going to hear his name a lot tonight, but I know Coach Goodman was really emphatic about wanting to establish their running game tonight. Second and seven from the 18. Meyer on the right hip of Hess. Man in motion, a little short flip, and what do we got, a flag. Motion penalty. Yeah, it looks like we had a little bit of movement down there, Mark. Um, it might have even been the motion man, uh, you know, moving a little early. I'm not, I'm not sure, but uh, maybe we'll pick it up on the replay. But, um, you know, that's the first time we've seen kind of a, a jet sweep kind of look that they were going to try to maybe attack the flank. Push the football back to the 23-yard line. They need to get to the 11 for a first down. It's second and 12. Audie, Meyer in the backfield in the eye. Hess is going to roll right. Stay with him, Shane. Stay with him, Shane. And he's just going to tuck it and get whatever he can. Good coverage downfield before he gets knocked out of bounds. The hit was made by number 64. That's Will Fox. Yeah, Will Fox did a nice job because he came from a right defensive end position. And you can kind of see him here on the replay, 64, just following uh, uh, down the line of scrimmage and then eventually making a play. But, you know, I was impressed there, that not only with the uh, Fox, but just the uh, Marion Local to be impatient with uh, uh, 
the, the passing to make sure that they made a good play and not make do something that they don't need to do at this point. He picked up four, so we're looking at third down here at about 12. Hess will look, look, against the four-man rush, finally gets pressure and guns it out. Is it caught? And it is caught. He put the ball right into the hands of number 33, and that's Connor Bruns, his tight end. Yeah, impressed with Tate Hess's poise there. Uh, really, um, you know, it fakes the, the sweep here, and then there's not a lot of open right now. And so he stays poised. You see him kind of get flustered out of the pocket, puts it in a really nice spot. And great camera work by our WSN uh, yeah. uh, people down here. But nice job because, ooh, it was, it was pretty close yeah, there. We're in the red zone. Our red zone sponsor is Knee Camp Farm Market, your one-stop shop since 1998 on State Route 128, eight miles south of Salina. Is first and goal from right at the 10 yard line. Here's that sweep. Adi cuts it inside. Adi into the end zone. He yeah. is. Kyle Adi pops in from 10 yards out. Well, that's going to give Marion Local just, you know, a commanding. Now, four, you know, 13 points, you say, well, that's only two scores, but in a game like this, that's a commanding lead. And um, this play is a very similar play to the touchdown earlier. They just ran it from a different formation. Adi lines up in the slot, but basically motions back to a tailback position, and it's just that power sweep. They've got guards going. They've got, you know, full body right, you know, as Vince Lombardi would say, and Adi did a really good job of putting his head down and finding the end zone. Here's Bills for the PAT attempt, and he nails it through. So we've had an Allen Davis touchdown. We've had a Wright State Lake Insurance Extra point, we're gonna go to break. You're watching High School Football at WSN. Our score was provided by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. Quick 14-0 lead for the Mary Local Flyers. Here's that last play, and it is a catch, right, John? Next well, you last know, we, play. we radioed to our replay <laughs> official, Ben Reif, and he's confirmed from the truck right outside of the stadium that that was a catch. Great camera work and great uh, job of uh, getting that on film, guys. Absolutely. Question of whether he caught it inbounds or not. He certainly did if you saw the left foot. Going to fake the handoff. This is number six, A.J. Hartleman, hit up the sideline. Too many flyers over there. He couldn't even get to the 20. Well, that's discipline because they faked the reverse. Uh, it could have been easily, uh, you know, the, the Marion local Flyers could easily have gotten out of their kickoff lanes, but they stayed disciplined, stayed where they needed to be, and uh, they made a nice play on special teams. Well, that was a special teams play, of course, John. I've seen multiple games this year of the Flyers. Twice I've seen gadget plays, like you run the ball off the center and flip the ball back to the quarterback. He's looking, oh. and both times there's two safeties sitting back there with them. <laughs> you know, guys just read their keys and do yep. what they're supposed to do. They're disciplined. They're well coached. They know what they're supposed to do, and it shows. All right, trips left now for Braylon Harleman. He's going to look, throw, snapped out, it's caught. And head up the sideline, and then run down from behind by Eifert, but a nice catch and run by A.J. Harleman. And I think that's a good idea. Those bubble screens are a really good idea just to get some confidence, just to get some first downs. Um, and plus, Marion Local has transitioned from being – Ultra aggressive from press coverage early. Now that you can see that they've backed off, probably going to more of a zone look, having that 14-point lead, trying to keep everybody in front of them, more of their traditional base package on defense. Second and one from their own 29-yard line, the Cavaliers. Braylon Harleman alone in the backfield this time. And he will run right up the middle. He will pick up a first down before he is brought down by Drew Seitz. Union Bank first down. Coldwater, and in, 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 I don't have a stat on this, but typically when they're empty, this is a quarterback run. And I don't think that there's a designed play call as far as a hole, but I think the, the liner is blocking what we call base blocking, just a base rule. And, and they're giving that quarterback the opportunity to kind of read it and to see where the opening is, especially like in a, in a, in a short yarded situation, just to get that first down. There's Harleman again. This time he's got Ebbing in the backfield. Nope, Ebbing's going to move to a slot position as well. Aja Harleman looking for a spot. And they're still trying to direct traffic around. Time on the play clock yet. That's not an issue. Harleman to throw. Looks and pulls it down. 
Just a three-man rush. And he snaps it out and gets knocked down. Good defensive play by Tate Hess to knock that one down. Well, he's helping himself uh, on defense. You know, he's the commander of the offense, but he's helping himself on defense, and he about got a pick six. Um, uh, just kind of waiting in back in that zone coverage, and uh, Evan Harlemert was open for a second, but by the time he let loose of the ball, uh, Hess did a nice job of breaking and almost making a pick. Well, he was out here waving, I'm open, I'm open, but he might have been able to move <laughs> a little bit more uh, back towards his quarterback, help him out a little bit. Three minutes to go here, opening quarter. It'll be second down and 10. Cavaliers with Jack Ebbing in the backfield, the 5'10 junior, along with Braylon Harlemert, and he's gonna roll right. Four-man rush this time, and a blitz coming. Meyer was coming, and he flipped it out of bounds. It'll fall incomplete. You know, I think this is the other thing, Mark, that's going to make this game um, a little bit more complicated for Coldwater is, is Marion Local likes to blitz, and they like to bring guys from different places. And when you have a quarterback who's, who's pretty fresh and pretty green at that position, uh, that can become confusing quickly. And you can see that he was a little bit confused there. They have guys shifting around on defense and um, just not, guys weren't open as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how that kind of plays out. Cody Depwig is now in the backfield along with Braylon Harlemick. He will shift to his right hip. And here come the Cavaliers, here come the Flyers. And no room to go. Eifert's back there. Along with Eifert is number 56, Jake Topp. And they get a sack. Just overwhelmed them. Yeah, Jake Top actually started at a defensive end position, and uh, they ran a stunt like a like a TNT is what you call it. And, uh, the nose is going to come down, and then uh, the tackle is going to loop inside. And he came free and was able to bring Harlemert down for a nice sack. We're in game number ten. Justin Kopp has only had to punt 21 times this season. This will be punt number 22. He averages 32 and a half per punt. Well, they almost got to him. This ball is going to hang up, and then Adi's going to watch it bounce out of bounds. So Marion Local already with a two-score lead will get the football back. You can see a little bit of what's happened a year ago with Marion Local. 2.07 to go here in our opening quarter. And this is Coldwater from a year ago. State runner up to Carey. How about this? Carey, Marion Local are in the same region this year, along with what, the Versailles Tigers? Yeah, Versailles, and yep. I'll tell you, that is one tough region. Oh, and, my goodness. You know, I, I, with the 16 teams going in, I, I, I hate to see what happens in some of those first-round games. I feel like it's going to be sectional basketball all over again. Third possession, Flyers. This is handoff, Meyer up the middle. Darren Meyer's got room to run, and he's turned the Jets on, and they get him from behind, but not before a big run. Well, and all the innovations of football, Mark, uh, they just ran a play that was probably created in 1907, which is trap. And if you've ever played a down of football, it's a real simple play. Uh, guards and center blocking down and a guard trapping out. And boy, what a big explosive play for the Flyers. A.J. Harlem had to run him down from behind. It's a Union Bank first down to the 25 of the Cavaliers. Trying to get that jet sweep action going and getting knocked down before he picks up too much yardage, though, is Drew Laos. Yeah, it's nice to see Drew Laos get the uh, carry there. He, you know, with the, the two dynamic backs that they have already, he doesn't have as many carries on the season. But uh, they've run that formation and that play a couple of different times. And one of the things I've noticed is that they try to hit it at different at different places. When Adi ran it just a few times ago on the, on the touchdown, they ran it more inside. He got it, and then he cut it up in. And that was more of a stretch play, trying to spread the sideline and get to the flank. He got nine yards on that, a little more than I thought he did, opening per per perception of it. And this is Meyer, and he goes up the middle and gets a Union Bank first down. We're also in the red zone. Our red zone sponsor tonight is Kneecamp Farm Market. And down to the 12, he goes pick up a four. And you had to know after a couple jet sweeps that they were going to try to run a counter. And so they did. They faked it and uh, tried to run that counter off of it and uh, really get that first down and really they're, they're in command of this game now, Mark, driving up uh, two touchdowns already. If they could extend this to three and only the first quarter here, they're in the driver's seat. Milan Cotty, Adi, pitch Adi. 
Meyer gets a good kick out block. Adi's trying to get to the corner and he gets run down. Good tackle on the far side by Jack Roaring. Something you don't see often, uh, you don't see a center pull. And so <laughs> the center snaps it, Mason rows, and then he pulls and gets out there and blocks. And uh, that's, a, that's an impressive uh, feat for a center to shotgun snap it then get out there. Picked up five to the seven yard line and that will bring our opening quarter to an end. It's all flyers right now. You're watching high school football WOSN. Our instant replays are made possible by Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and in Greenville. So far, a lot of those replays have shown the Marion local Flyers having some success. They're on the move again. They've scored twice in the opening quarter, and they're down to the uh, seven-yard line here facing a second and five as quarter number two begins. And you know, Mark, Coldwater statistically is used to giving up around 12 points a game. Giving up 21 points in the uh, first quarter would be, would be like a shell shock. And so, you know, uh, defensively, it's going to be interesting to see how they can react here and try to stop them. This is Darren Meyer, and he will power inside the five. He gets to about the four yard. Then he gets, needs to get to the two for a first down. Yeah, that's the same trap play that they hit big early. Uh, just run trap again, and uh, now uh, down here in the uh, the red zone, they're going to be probably uh, pretty uh, vanilla and uh, just try to play a little power football and, and get this in the end zone. And if you're cold water, you got to be aggressive here. You got to you got to do something up front that's going to create maybe a loss or a tackle on the backfield. It is third and two from the four yard line. Hess will go under center. Partington's in the backfield now. He will be the lead blocker. Darren Myers behind him, and Meyer gets touchdown from the four yard line out. They went double tight with the wing, motion the wing and then ran just a, just the straight ISO uh, to the weak side. Well, it would have been the strong side after the, uh, the motion, but uh, uh, Adi just does a great job of, uh, or Darren Meyer, excuse me, just does a great job of keeping his shoulders square, falling forward into the end zone. And uh, you can see even in the end zone, there's a big crowd of people kind of looking stunned right now, mm -hmm. now that there's 20 points on the scoreboard for the Flyers. Touchdowns are sponsored by a. Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business insurance, and more. Here's Bills for the PAT. He hammers through the PAT. Our extra points are sponsored by Wright State Lake Campus. It's 21 for the Flyers, zero for the Cavaliers. You're watching high school football, WOSN. Our first call of each quarter is sponsored by IC Signs in Wapakoneta, the home of a business package startup. We are local, fast, and friendly. Check us at iCSigns.net. Very local Flyers, 255 off the clock, six plays, 60 yards. And they've had three possessions and put three sevens up. Well, and the game could not have started any better for Marion Local. I mean, they have just done exactly what they wanted to do in all three phases of the game, limiting cold water on defense and having a great offensive series here. This ball heads to Durr, but gets out of bounds instead, so Coldwater will take over on their own 35-yard line. And that's probably really the first mistake that they've made the, the, the entire game right there. You can see the penalty yardage for these two teams this year through the first nine games. And local has been penalized 30 times. The Cavs a few more times. It's our turnover situation as well. These two teams don't turn the ball over. They do not, and they're in, in, and what I like is the amount of penalties. I mean, Marion Local, 30 penalties through nine games, Mark. We've called yeah. games with 30 <laughs> penalties. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, that I is incredible discipline uh, to go into week nine with those kind of statistics. I saw one team get 45 yards in penalties <laughs> on one play last week. So. All right, they're going to go two by two with the receivers. In the backfield is Ebbing along with Harlemert. And Harleman's going to try to jump up the middle. He good, pretty good yardage. He's got four on first down. Yeah, good first yardage, uh, first down yardage play. Uh, Marion Local must have seen something within that formation because immediately they dropped a safety down into the box, so they went cover zero. Guys pressed on the outside, and 
Uh, I know that there's a lot of uh, quarterback design runs, so maybe formationally they've seen something there yeah, and, and adjusted the defense. I wish you hadn't have done that. I've been talking to my good friend Mark Miller. He explained <laughs> cover two, he explained <laughs> cover one, he explained <laughs> cover three, and now i got to go ask you what cover zero means. <laughs> Mark knows a lot more <laughs> than I do, so I'm not going to I'm not gonna uh, act like I like it any more than him. He's my guru. <laughs> Here's Harleman. Looks, looks against a four-man rush, snaps it out, catches Evan Harleman on the sideline. It's going to be a little short of the first down. And a really nice reaction by uh, Ryan Homan there uh, for the Flyers. He just stays in his zone. You can see him uh, backpedaling there, and then he reacts to the football and, and does a nice job of making sure that he pushes Harlem right out of bounds and keeps him from getting the first down. Yeah, third and two, and I would call this a very important third down for the Cavaliers. Everything's important for Coldwater right now. Any yard that they can scratch, claw, fight to get is important. This, you know, I hate to say this is one of the most important plays of the game, but they yeah. really need it to get some momentum here. Parliament alone in the backfield. Meyer blitzes. He runs past it and dives over the, for the first down. Good run off left tackle. And that's, I think, one of the first times we've seen Coldwater not uh, Harlem, most of Harlem's runs have been on quarterback draws or, or scrambling. That's the first time you've seen him really put his head down and try to get yardage. I think that they might have to go to that a little bit more just to kind of play that, to, to kind of match that power football that Marion Local wants to play. This is a Union Bank first down. Union Bank first down, and the Union Bank is committed to you to the 46-yard line. Will be first down. Ebbing switches to the side of the fake the reverse. Here's a quick pass out that's caught. Curtis Durer caught that one. And it looks, it looks like they're going to call Don't that. Wave that off, did they? I was already writing that down. It looks like it skipped on the turf ah. there just before uh, the, the the ball got there. We'll get a good uh, look on the replay here, but uh, just not enough to get the first down or the reception, I should say. Very quickly called it incomplete. That was my error in putting that in the scorebook so quickly. Second down, 9-11 to go here, opening half. There you can see the skip you talked about. Here's Harlem moving some guys around. And he will throw again. Nope, he's going to step up the middle, run up the middle, and he will dive forward to about the 49-yard line. Yeah, Braylon Harlem. One of the things that, you know, we, we kind of talked about and before the game, Mark, was that uh, not only is he a great athlete, but having him play quarterback, um, you can see why they have him in that position. He's athletic. He can make good decisions. He can make plays. But I think the part that bothers, you know, that hurts them is he's was their best, one of their best receivers yes. as well. So losing his presence, uh, uh, trying to get open, and losing blasting game, I think's really uh, changed the dynamic of what they do offensively. Twenty-six catches, three hundred and ninety yards, and five scores for him this year, and. He had to move into the quarterback position a week ago. And what are we going to get? We're going to get a Metzger Financial Services timeout. This one's called by Coldwater. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Timeout tonight are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. And our Red Zone sponsor is Camp Farm Market, your one-stop shop since 1998. On State Route 128, eight miles south of Salina, our opening timeout. Pretty big play, third and a long six, facing the Cavaliers. Evan Hardiman will look to roll right, gets a block, and snap throw, and it's going to fall incomplete as he tried to squeeze it into Evan Harleman. Well, and the confusion by what Marion Local is doing, shifting around so much, I think is really uh, throwing Braylon Harlemer for a loop because by the time he's able to just get out around um, the outside of the tackle there, he's now then trying to read uh, coverage, and there's just very, very little time to see uh, who's open and who's not. Cavaliers had a six-play drive, but this is going to come up short of the first down by about six and a half, and so they're going to punt. This is Justin Kalp again. And the first punt earlier, Mark, was about blocked. So, yes. you know, this is critical that they get a punt off, and it looks like Marion Local might be bringing everybody. And Marion Local has called a timeout. So we're going to take a break also. 8.17 to go, opening half. You're watching High School Football at WSN. Another Metzger Financial Services timeout. This one by the Flyers. And in the punt formation goes Justin Kalp. 
back deep is Nathan Busher. In fact, they're going to come. But they back out of it. And that one's going to go off the side of his foot. And let's see what kind of hop he gets. And he just kick checks up out of bounds. I think Coach Goodwin did the right thing there. I think that it uh, looked like they were going to come and try to block it. Um, and then decided to go ahead and take a pen or take a timeout and then readjust and just play coverage and that's smart right now. You got a big lead. There's no reason to get a penalty or something trying to get a block punt at this point. There are three numbers that are in jeopardy with a 21 to nothing flyer lead. They have scored all three times they've had the football and this time they will get the football on their own 28 yard line. I was here a few weeks ago calling New Bremen and Coldwater and you can see why it's so difficult. Uh, to win here because just cold, cold water is just elusive at home. The way they play at home and the fans and the whole environment is just a really awesome place to be. Hess will roll right being pursued and is going to chuck it out of bounds wisely. It looked like Ethan Heitkamp there came up from a corner position and uh, put pressure on the quarterback. And you know I think Coldwater is going to probably have to turn up the the, the volume on defense and you know, maybe have to do some things that they're not uh, custom, customarily do, but they're in a situation that they're not typically in. Second and 10 from the 28 yard line. Meyer, Adi behind Hess in the eye. And pitch right, Adi trying to get wide. And what, well, thought they had him hemmed in, he still picked up yardage. And he's still pushing the pilot near the first down. That's just great awareness by Adi to the, the play's designed as a sweep, so he's he's really he's following his blockers, but he's smart enough and patient enough to cut back against the grain and to get those few extra yards. You see him uh, cut back right up here, and you can see that he's got blockers in front of him enough to push the pile forward. And look at him just push people. He's listed at 170. He does not run like a 170 pounder. He's got 170 in all the right places, Mark. <laughs> there you go. And this time he does pick up a Union Bank first down as he plunges forward again. This time to the 43-yard line. You know, historically, Marion Local has, uh, they've always kind of had that one tailback that just got the majority of their carries. And I think they're just in a situation this year where they've got several guys that can carry the ball. and. It really a lot, adds so much to the offense when you can, can uh, divide up the carries. This is Meyer. He runs into a tackle right around the 45-yard line and falls forward. Yeah, he ran into Sam Obringer, who's actually the leading tackler in the MAC right now and has done a really nice job of playing uh, linebacker. And he does a really good job of scraping here over the top, and you see him bring uh, uh, Meyer down, and that's a really nice stop there for uh, Sam Obringer. You, know, you saw a couple of uh, black jerseys. They were looking like who has the football right there. The, the ball handling skills of Tate Hess are very good. Well, and that's something that, uh, you know, he's just drilled into his head at practice. They've practiced the, those things a million times, and that's something that's not fun to practice. Kids like to practice deep balls and all that kind of stuff, but uh, practicing your fakes is not high on the uh, the, the the fun scale. So, uh, you know, Tate Hess is, uh, says a lot about him to carry out those fakes. Picked up three. He'll be looking at uh, second and seven right here in his flyer offense. And a nice offensive line. 51, Adam Winter, 56, Jake Top, 59, Kyle Ungren, 68, Shane Fleck, 77, Mason Rose. The tight end is number 33, Connor Bruns. Quick flip. And up right around midfield is lost. He needs to get to the 47 of Coldwater to get a first down. He's about three short. And I think they're they're calling that play based upon the front that they're seeing because that's the second time I've seen center Mason Rose pull. So I think a lot of times when uh, the uncovered lineman is the one pulling, and you know, Mark, they you feel like they've run a lot of different plays, but I think they've just run about three plays from different formations. Third and three from midfield. This is Meyer, and he breaks loose, and he will get down to the 40-yard line and pick up a Union Bank first down in the process. And that is a difficult thing to defend, you know, with one uh, giving the ball to Kyle Adi, having to worry about him in the backfield, and then getting the ball to Darren Meyer. Boy, he's a good-looking back, and 
I really like how he squares his shoulders, and he's always falling forward to get those first downs. Darren Meyer, 5'10", 195 pounds. He's the reigning defensive player of the year in the MAC from the 2021 season. Here's Adi on the sweep, and he will go through the first tackler, but not the second. Picks up a couple to the 39. You know, John, I was doing some research on this. There were 30 players last year made first team all MAC, you know, special teams players and certain number of linemen and so on. 26 of them were seniors. <laughs> <laughs> and then the two of the four who were not are named Darren Meyer and Aiden Eifert, <laughs> and they're still playing here tonight. That just says so much about this league because in today's, in today's game, you see a lot of juniors, a lot of sophomores on the field, and in the Mac, you don't see that. It's mostly juniors and a lot of seniors uh, on the field tonight. Short handoff inside. Meyer still pushing the pile. He will pick up yet another Union Bank first down. As he gets to the 31-yard line. This will be play number nine in this drive coming up. It's, it's fun to watch this because we're so used to, to seeing spread offenses, and as fun as they are, I feel like I'm watching a Bill Goodwin coach team here, you know, the well, old Mustang coach, yes. uh, you know, because these formations, these plays are very similar to what I remember Alan East running for ever, I believe. <laughs> Tim's, Tim's father and his mother, Judy, had their 60th wedding anniversary last weekend. How about that? Here's Meyer inside the 25-yard line that time. And they're just they're just taking not only chunks of yards but chunks of time on the clock, and this can be demoralizing. I mean, this is kind of a, of a philosophy of of, of uh, football where you're not concerned about getting 20 yards. You want that five yards a pop, and you want that ball control. And they've had the football for nearly five minutes on this drive that began back on their own 28-yard line. The play clock is at 10. Pusher went in motion. This will be a pitch to Adi, and what do we have? Motion. Looks like we're going to get a false start here, and I think that that's just the, that's a formation we have not seen, a motion that we have not seen false yet. Start. It might be something that, uh, you know, I think at this point, we hate to say it, but Coach Goodwin's probably preparing for the next few weeks, trying to do some things and work on some things that they're going to look at doing, you know, in week uh, 11, 12, 13, and so on. And so uh, they looked a little uncomfortable with that formation there. Both of these teams, win or lose, will most likely have two games at home in the playoffs. Certainly the winner will. Marion Local, according to the computer, plays the number one schedule, number one most difficult schedule in Division VI, and they're going to go undefeated. Well, Maybe. I think with ha adding Walpock a few years ago yep. to the front end of that schedule and then playing in the MAC, you know, facing New Bremen, facing Versailles, and facing Coldwater, I mean, it, it's a brutal schedule, Mark. Not much that time. Well, they have defeated Wapak Canetta, who will at least win, perhaps share, the Western Buckeye League, and if Macomb wins tonight, they will defeat the second league champion in the BBC champion. Well, and, and you know, I know that they rotate the schedule in the MAC, but like you said, Walpock, Macomb, but they've also had to play Minster, they've played New Bremen, they've played Versailles, uh, they've played Anna for recovery yeah. in St. Henry. I mean, they, they've went through the meat grinder. Two receivers to the right. Myers on the left hip of Hess. It comes out of in motion. Hess to throw, and now he'll run. He gets tackled right to get out the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's Evan Homan. He's uh, he's been active. Uh, he's to me he's he's that uh, that that igniter on that defensive line. He plays with a lot of energy and he plays a, at a high level. And you can see him kind of yelling at the guys now to try to get them going. And um, that's a characteristic of of him that I've seen quite a bit. Timeout. We're going to take a Metzger Financial Services timeout. Also, you're watching high school football on WOSN. First down sponsor tonight is Union Bank. Here's Marion Local trying to pick up one here on fourth down. They're going to roll left. Snap throw. It's caught. And stepping out of bounds is Nathan Busher. Did he get to the first down sticks? Boy, it's going to be close, Mark, because uh, it looks like he might have just just missed the first down. I guess the spot's going to be pretty important here, and they're probably going to have a measurement because it's going to be awfully close. Well, you've been around football a long time, and back in a different lifetime, I was on the chain gang, and I can assure <laughs> you, you always measure on the other side of the field to make you run all the way over there. There's 2.04 left here to go before halftime. 
Well, I think the most difficult yeah. part about the chain gang is just trying to avoid everybody on the field, isn't it? I mean, it, just getting out there on the it, field. <laughs> it, it helped a few years ago when they put that sideline warning in. That, yeah. that helped a little bit. And, but I tell you what, uh, John, as a, as a young, 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 a long time ago, high school basketball coach, being on the visiting sideline five times a, a year <laughs> and listening how coaches <laughs> handle their players, their staff, it yeah. was a very good learning experience for a young coach. Yeah, and, you know, I think the, the cool thing about it is is that, uh, you know, when you have these rivalries, you know, it's easily, you know, sometimes you feel like, you know, you, schools hate each other and all that kind of stuff. That's not true. You know, there's a lot of admiration and respect amongst well, these schools. We're looking at this one. It's a first down. A Union Bank first down to the 21-yard line, and they made it by a small margin. The Cavaliers didn't think he'd get there, but the official – and that would be our head official tonight, Joe Volpio. He said yes, and it's first down to 21. It looked like he called strike three. I mean, he was emphatic <laughs> about that he first was. down. Good call. <laughs> All right, from the 21-yard line, the Flyers have had the ball three times in the opening half. They have scored three times. They're trying to go for four. Hess will go under center with Meyer and Adi in the eye behind him. Busher in motion. Adi on the pitch, and he cuts inside. He's still running, and his balance gets him down. They got a flag come in behind that one. Same blocking scheme as the jet sweeps. Uh, they're just under center, pulling Mason Rose. Uh, but looks like we—I mean, it might be a face mask mark. I'm not sure if it, it looked like his head went down, and uh, they might. It is yeah. good call. So that penalty. We'll take the ball half the distance to the goal line, and they will put it down at, looks like about the six, where it'll be first and goal. We're in the red zone. Our red zone sponsor is Decamp Farm Market, your one-stop shop since 1998 on State Route 128, eight miles south of Salina, and it does go to the six-yard line. Hundred and one seconds to go here before halftime. This is Partington ahead of Meyer. This will be Meyer. Darren Meyer cuts inside and the ball is loose and we got all kinds of orange things flying around. One official said it was down. Boy, I don't like those orange markers. No, they look I, so much like a penalty flag. They sure I, do. And well, it looks like they're going to give the ball back to Marion Local, Mark, and then Coldwater is going to call a timeout here. But I didn't really get a signal. Did you? I mean, I didn't really see. I, I did not. You can see Eifert's on the on the ground with a football. Let's take a look at it here on our end zone camera. There, the ball came out, yep. and there's Eifert <laughs> trying to <laughs> pick it up and get into the end zone. <laughs> He's trying to get his name in the stat book, and I don't blame him. Aiden Eifert was there and uh, did a nice job of not only recovering the ball, but the uh, knee was down, so they're going to call him down and then uh, not get him in the end zone. Is it a bit odd that Coldwater's the one calling the timeout here? He wants to save a little bit of time, but he's also, uh, you know, kind of setting the flyers up here. Yeah, I, well, I think they're in a position now where they've, they've got to scheme something up, and, and it's probably a pressure situation. They probably know what Marion Local's two to three best plays are in this situation, so it might be a good time to remind those kids what, what, what's, what's coming. Look at this. Look at the numbers they've put up. Marion Local's... Six shutouts this year in nine games. They're going to have a pretty good opportunity to make it six and a half by the time the uh, next one minute 33 goes off the clock. And Coldwater's given up 109 points in nine games. Boy, these teams have been so good all year long. That was a Coldwater timeout, so they are done with timeouts for the opening half, and the football is just outside the one-yard line. And, I mean, I, I know it's kind of a running joke, but it, it's true, I think, that – it's harder to win the MAC than it is to win a state title. And these are the two, in, in our opinion, my opinion, and, you know, maybe some would differ, best programs in Ohio. I love watching these uh, two schools well, play. New Bremen is Division Seven. You don't want to play them in the, in the playoffs. They are good. There's Meyer, and Meyer this time holds on to the football and blasts into the end zone. And that will be a Allen Davis Insurance touchdown, your first Solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business, and insurance, and more right behind Partington. 
And Darren Meyer, he's been their guy. Whenever they yeah. get in the red zone or they ever they need, you know, some short yardage, um, he's the guy. You know, you talked about his size, you know, 5'10", 195 pounds. That is a load, especially when you run that low to the ground and that kind of power. Bills is in for the extra point or extra points are sponsored by Wright State Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in associates or a bachelor's degree, you can try Wright State University Lake Campus. And that PAT for the fourth time and a half sails through. And it will now be a 28 to nothing lead for the Marion Local Flyers. Yeah, I'm looking at Myers' numbers. 526 yards coming into this evening. He had 17 touchdowns. And as you said, they get close to the goal line and they give the ball the 195 pounder, particularly when you bring Partington in ahead of him, who goes 185 and, and just can, can clear space out. Well, and, you know, you look at their statistics. You looked at uh, Darren Meyer, like you said, 526 yards rushing. Kyle Lotte came into the game with 523. Yep. So I love the fact that they gave the ball to both those guys. But, but the touchdowns, you can see that Darren Meyer, 17 touchdowns uh, coming into this game. He's their guy in the red zone. He's the guy that they trust. And Adi's a little bit more of the big play guy. But it's nice to have options, isn't it? Six, six minutes. There you go. Look at this. That's pretty good. Highest winning percentage. Of course, Tim Goodwin's team a year ago won their 12th state championship. They now lead all schools in the state of Ohio in number of state championships won. I mean, that those numbers, just they speak for themselves, Mark. Look at the overall uh, games won since 2000. I mean, yeah. for those teams to have that similar of a record, it just shows what, what incredible programs both of these schools have, uh, have had over the long term here. That, that touchdown drive went 15 plays, 72 yards, 640 off the clock. That is a Tim Goodwin drive. Uh, did it accomplish exactly what they wanted to? They scored. They got a lot of points. Uh, they got the points they wanted and time off the clock. Bills pops the football up in the air. It's caught by Curtis Dewar, and he is going to run out of bounds short of the 20-yard line. And Coldwater with no timeouts left. See what Coach Chip Otten has in mind. His team uh, will get the football first in the second half. And so look at that one. Well, I, I would like to say, you know, maybe they just want to, you know, get in at halftime and give them a talk here and get them going. But that's not the way Coldwater plays. They've played aggressive no matter what point of the game it is, whether they're up or down. They've been aggressive the entire year, and I look for them to go aggressively here before the half. Send uh, three receivers to the left. And now they've got guys moving all over the place for Braylon Harleman, and he will look to throw, a little screen action out, and slipping through the first to tackle will be Curtis Durer. And he picked up a few yards. And those bubble screens are going to be important. I think going into the second half, it's just important to complete passes to get some momentum, to get some confidence, too. Got away from Eifert right there. He rolls right this time, and will throw it out of bounds, and Get knocked down in the backfield in the process. He was being chased by Nick Randley. We're going to have the band show coming up for you here in just a few moments. We'll put those people on the field for you. And then Mr. Zerby and I will be back. We'll have our locks, chiropractic and weight loss halftime presentation for you. Talk about adjustments for the teams to make as they head into the next 24 minutes. Third down and eight with 62 seconds to go before that halftime activities take place. Trips to the right. Three-man rush this time. And going to go down in the backfield. Parliament gets sacked in the backfield. That's the second sack this evening. So he'll go down at about the 19-yard line. And this time it will be a flyer timeout. Well, the sack is going to be uh, by number 56, Jake Topp. But um, we mentioned his name just to play go. Nick Ranley, defensive end. He's six foot two, and he's just long. And he's just really giving the uh, the offensive line from Coldwater a lot of issues. And uh, it freed Topp up to make a nice play. 56.4 left. Last time, the Flyers chose not to come after the punter. A little different scenario this time. Or try to get the ball midfield. Uh, Interested to see how Coach Goodwin want to play this. I think this is a this is a situation where you, you probably want to play it safe and you probably want to play coverage. 
especially with the wind, you're going to get great field uh, position, and you still have a timeout. So if you want to get yourself in field goal position, I think there's a good opportunity to do that. Third putt of the half for Justin Kalp. And on the, the plus side of midfield will be Adi and Busher. And they look like they're going to come. They send some up the middle. Partington almost got there. Did a good job of avoiding the punter. And that's going to skip out of bounds on the far side of the field. Marion Local with a timeout left in 50 and a half seconds will get the football. <laughs> and I, I love the mindset. You know, my mindset's thinking, you know, hey, you got a big lead. Yeah. You know, maybe you want to get in a half and you want to talk. Coach Goodwin's like, no, we're going to block the punt. We're going to try to get more points on the scoreboard. And uh, you haven't been uh, guys as, as successful as he has been, which there's really no other in the state, to be honest. Um, that's the way they, ha they think, and I, I really admire that. You know, John, Aiden Eifert was the MAC punter of the year last year, right? He's averaging almost 37, 36.9. He's punted 15 times in nine <laughs> games and four of them were in the first game. <laughs> they got a stud back, doesn't get a chance to, to play his craft. Here's from their own, from the 46 yard line of the Cavaliers. Hess will roll to his left and throw, and Adi made a nice catch and stays in bounds. Is that going to be a first down? It is down to about the 35-yard line of Union Bank first down. Picked up the 11. Nice move by Adi. Good hands, too. Great hands and a great awareness of where the football is and where the first down marker was to, to, to get that first down. But now you're going to kind of see uh, Marion Local get into their, their two-minute offense here trying to get some points before half. Has to look again. This time he's chased in the backfield, and he's going to unload it towards the sideline. He's got a man over there. I think that was Busher. It well, was. Yeah, and Busher ran a go route. Uh, he was deep down the uh, the sideline, and he actually came back to the ball. Uh, so he did a really nice job of adjusting his route. And uh, Tate Hess showed his arm strength there. He was uh, getting pressure and uh, throwing off his back foot and, and made a, a great throw uh, for uh, really good yardage. Flyers have the football with 17.8 seconds to go on the 28. Carson Bills, if you're wondering, has made one field goal this year from 35 yards out. So they need to get down around the 18 to give him an opportunity. They still have that single timeout remaining on the board. It is second down as well. That's what roll was left this time. And we'll throw it. And that time it goes off the hands of Busher, who's probably out of bounds anyway. It was a two-man route, and uh, it just looked like they were uh, they had one guy running a corner and one guy running an underneath route, and it looks like uh, it looked like T. Hess was actually going to take a, take off and run, and I think that's why Busher kind of stopped his route and was when the ball finally got to him, it looked like he kind of uh, didn't expect it to come there. And you can see his leap would have taken him out of bounds. Good job on the replay tonight. Our replays have been brought to you this evening by Layfield Industrial and Welding Supplies. Good job with our camera people. Good job in the truck tonight. Here's Hess on third down. And we'll run up the middle and head to the sideline and then check out of bounds. Questions, did he get to the sticks or not? I think he got a first down. Um, it looked like he barely got there, but maybe I'm wrong because yeah. it looks like they're, they're, they're putting up the fourth down uh, number on the chains. I know he tried to do the reach forward trick, but I think he was already about out of bounds before he did that. He got to the 26, and he needed to get to the 25, so it will be fourth down. And just 4.3 seconds to go here before half. Now Coach does have a timeout remaining, and I have the suspicion that's his idea. Plenty of time to think this was right in the middle of the screen. You can see Coach Goodwin. And there's his call for a timeout. That will be his third and final timeout here before the half. Final charge timeout, Marion Local. Here's where we stand computer point-wise. We knew Tri-Village was going to be good this year. We did a tournament game for them last year. They had a whole bunch of really young guys. They're 8-1. You can see Versailles in there. This is D6, Region 24, and it is just stacked with good football teams. Yeah, one of the better divisions in Ohio. And isn't it neat to kind of see that Marion local up top and then Allen East right underneath there? We talked about Coach Bill Goodwin a little a little bit ago, and 
he's got to be kind of excited about seeing yeah. those two schools up there. Here's Coldwater. They would probably leap over Liberty Center should they come back and win this game this evening. Archibald Liberty Benton is playing Macomb tonight for the BVC championship. And Bluffton hanging in there on the edge. Bluffton needs a win this evening against a very good Columbus Grove football team who is exceptional defensively. Yeah, that, that's that's a really good division or region right yeah. there. Liberty Center and Elmwood, Eastwood having a great year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Coldwater's got their, they're going to have their hands full once they get in the playoffs next week. More than likely, barring penalty, this will be the final play of the opening half. 4.3 to go, just a very short margin for a first down. That's probably not of significance right here. With no timeouts remaining. Has to throw. Blitz coming up the middle. It's picked up. He's throw it to the end zone and goes through the hands. He made a really nice effort. Put yeah. the ball out there for a whole shirt and went through his hands out the back of the end zone. And the opening half will come to an end. It's Marion Local 28, it's Coldwater nothing. The band show and the halftime adjustments coming up after this. You're watching High School Football, WOSN. Presented by LOX Chiropractic and Weight Loss, offering area residents good health and good chiropractic care. Mark Shine and John Zerby. Hey John, that was a half for the Marion Local Flyers <laughs> to kind of you know, put in the record books, put on film, and let's take a look at this one again. They played really well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they don't need to do anything different. I think if there's anything, they just don't want to mess this thing up. Anything and everything that they wanted to do happened, and that's why you see this big lead. And, and for Coldwater, just uncharacteristic. They're in this uh, uncharted water for them. So, you know, it's going to see be interesting to see how they kind of respond to that coming into the second half. If you're Chip out, and obviously you're down 28 eight to nothing, and you, you're going into the playoffs next week, and maybe you start thinking of some of the things we can do with our team to prepare for that as well. Yeah, I think you have to look at the positives and what do we do well and focus on those things and try to build on something because as you go into the playoffs next week, you're going to look at uh, but what can we do versus not, you know, what didn't we do this Friday night. Yeah, they got to hope to get Marcel Blast game back in three to four weeks. That would be a benefit for them. In the meantime, sure. they're going to deal with Harlem at quarterback, and they got some, some things they can work with him tonight too. Yeah, he's done a great job, and, and yeah. you know, no, no, nothing against him. It's just that their offense seems out of sync, and it's it's because of all the newness and the different things going on, and plus they're playing Marion Local, the number one yeah, team in the sure. state. Well, John, how about this? Okay, well, for the last nine weeks now, we've been talking about the John Reed Leadership Award, yeah. and we accept nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award, nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, and commitment to others, as well as excellence on the field. You can go to our website and nominate yeah. for that. And you were the 2011 winner. Yeah, what an honor. Uh, still, to this day, uh, didn't deserve the award. And um, oh, yeah. But uh, mainly well. because of who John Reed was. I mean, um, not only because of his coaching, but – his faith, and yes. that was the big thing, you know, as a follower of Jesus myself, um, just trying to model his 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 model that he gave to his players, being Jesus not only on the field, in the classroom, in the community. That was the perfect model, and that's the you know really what the the award is all about. Uh, very early in my time here in this area, John and I were on a speaking engagement together, and we were talking a little bit, and uh, I said, you know, how did you get the job at Coldwater? He said, I went into the interview and said. I will love your players like they were my son. Yep. Now, not a lot of football coaches use that as their way to get <laughs> hired, you know. So congratulations to John. One other thing that we, we often point out when we talk about this award, it is not just for a head coach. You can nominate a JV coach or a junior high coach if you choose. Now, the first award winner was Bill Sammons. And Bill is an assistant at Walpock for a long time. He's been an assistant at Spencerville. Um, there is no better model right. and no better uh, better perfect person to win the war than Bill Salmon. So you can nominate assistant coaches, uh, junior high coaches, like you said, co those coaches that make an impact on your kids. Tim Goodwin won this back in 2014, another good example out here. And last year was Stephen Carter from Lima Senior. Stephen, of course, was an assistant as well. So you can go to our WSN or d .TV, and you can go to the tab there and nominate for that particular position as well. Well, we've got Marion Local back on the field, and uh, Coldwater's going to get the football first in the second half. Uh, our locks chiropractic thing, well, what do you think their adjustments are going to be as they head in the second half? Well, for Coldwater, I think you just start with let's get some positive things going. You know, if you look at statistically in the first half, 
no points on the scoreboard. And at the end of the day, that's the stat that matters the most. Can you score? And I think they just got to try to get something going on offense, try to build something so that they can build that confidence. And not only for this game, but just, just to get their guys familiar with uh, getting, uh, getting uh, yards and points and things like that so they can leave this game feeling good about themselves. All right, this has been our Locks Chiropractic and Weight Loss Halftime Adjustments. We're back with the second half action right after this. You're watching High School Football on WSN. We're back at Cavalier Stadium where tonight's game is presented by Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to mattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. And our premier sponsor tonight for the Marion Local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, standing, and assembly needs, you can call OPAC. Well, the game has been a Marion Local opening half. They took the opening tickoff. They went uh, 60 yards in three plays. Darren Meyer punched it in the first of his three touchdowns in the opening half. Then they got a fumble recovery. They went 21 yards in four plays. And then they went a six-play, 60-yard drive. And then the big one at the half, 15 plays, 72 yards. They took 640 off the clock. It is 28-0 Marion Local, and Coldwater will get the football first here in half number two. Carson Bills does the kickoff duties. Deep for the Marion, uh, for the Coldwater Cavaliers, number six is A.J. Harlement. And on our side of the field, number seven is Curtis Dewar. Very local and special teams action. And, John, the wind has picked up a bit. Uh, it favors Coldwater here in this third quarter. And the football sails into the hands of Durer, and he starts up the middle, then goes to his right. He's got some room up the sidelines before Bills tries to knock him out of bounds, and finally Adi does, as well as Meyer. There are two stud players, offensive yeah. and defense, and they're on the kickoff team. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think it's a sign of great teams that play their best players on special teams. Gone are those days where you say, we're going to get a sophomore or a freshman some experience on special teams. I, I think you put your best players out there, and uh, you see why, because it's so critical in these types of games. The quarterback has been number four this season. That is Braylon Harlemont. Braylon is a 5'10 junior, and he steps into the backfield along with Jack Ebbing, our opening play of the second half this evening. This is Ebbing, and he bounces one to the outside. Makes the first guy miss before he gets run down by Darren Meyer. They get to the 46. That would be a pickup of four on first down. Well, I like the strategy already because, you know, first half immediately we see a lot of Braylon Harlemer quarterback runs, a lot of pass plays. But, you know, one of the things that Coldwater did not do was establish a running game with uh, Jack Ebbing, and he's one of their best runners. And, and there's several others that have touched the ball this year. I think that you kind of you kind of have to try to get those guys the ball this half and, and try to do something, you know, especially get that ground game. And he goes to Harlemer's hip, and Harlemer will keep the ball this time, and he is brought down. Good tackle by Aiden Eifert coming off the edge. Yeah, Aiden Eifert's been, he's been a real force at that outside linebacker position. Uh, playing that spot in that 3-4 defense, he just closes down and makes a picture-perfect tackle. I saw a team last week, and they gave up a whole lot of yards on the ground, and one of their linebackers was referred to as the Viper. Uh, <laughs> I, he might have been referred to as the Sieve because he, he couldn't make a lot of tackles, and they... I like those names. Yeah, you guys, you, you yeah. coaches come up with a lot of cool names, don't you? <laughs> We're looking at third down and a long five for Coldwater on their opening play of half number two. Here's Harleman to throw, and he's going to step up and run, and not this time because Darren Meyer got him. Well, you know, we've mentioned Darren Meyer's name a lot on offense, and but you talked about it just a little bit ago. He's the defensive player, player of the year, year last yes. year in the MAC. So, you know, uh, the defense just really hasn't been on the field much to talk about. And so, yeah. um, you know, Coldwater seems to be a lot, seems to have a lot of three and outs tonight. And so Meyer making a really big play, showing why he has been a, a really uh, impact player on defense. The Cavaliers went nine yards and or nine plays and fumbled in the first half. Then they went uh, five and punted. Then they went six and punted, and then they went three and punted. So they have not had a lot of uh, offensive production this evening. Here's their putter, Kalp, to punt. Justin gets a good punt away, headed to Adi. Kyle snags it right around the 26-yard line. And up the sideline he goes over the 40. 
So Marion Local holds and gets possession here with 9.31 to go in our third quarter. We were calling a game earlier in the year, Mark, and uh, speaking of nicknames, uh, you talked about Viper. We interviewed a young man after the game, and he said, our coach has called me the Cobra. He's named, named me after some Parker guy or something like that. <laughs> and, and we just laughed. He yeah. said, well, yeah, his name's Dave Parker. He did play baseball. You know, and the, it was just kind of funny how kids, they, you know, coaches give names based upon their, their heroes as kids, and these young kids are like, I have no idea who you're talking about, coach. Here's Meyer. And he's got room to run, dragging tacklers. He picks up a union bang first down. Well, I have a similar story, John. I was talking about uh, Adi and talking about Meyer, and I said, you know, Paul Horning used to run the ball to the one-yard line and let Jim Taylor run it into the end zone. And I got a lot of stares. So. <laughs> That's a first down to the 47 <laughs> of Coldwater. They pick up yardage on the opening down, about 13. A bit different formation this time. A little bit of what we used to call the Wildcat, new quarterback yeah. in there. Got uh, Adi playing Adi, quarterback. Yeah. He's done this in the past. That makes Hess a wide receiver. We're going to get a flag. Procedure penalty will go against the Flyers. And, you know, I, I know Coach Goodwin would never admit this, but he's he's very good at playing mind games with not only coaches that he's playing against, but – you know, we heard this earlier tonight. There's teams in Northeast Ohio watching yep. right now to see what's going on. So don't be shocked for him to throw out some formations just so teams have to prepare for that uh, coming up in the future. He, he knows everything and every formation, every play that he wants to do and what he wants to accomplish. First and 15 from their own 48-yard line this time. Busher in motion. Here's a pitch to Adi. Kyle cuts it back inside, and he's going to pick up another Union Bank first down. Great run, great blocking out ahead of him. Yeah, and he gets not only great blocking, but this play is designed. You see everybody moving to the right, but the play is designed for the cutback, which you see him cut right there, and he's back against the grain because what they want to do is they want to get the defenders to over-pursue with everybody moving in one direction, and when you make that cutback, that's where you get the big yards. So he's looking at those second and third level guys to know when to make his cut. Absolutely. Here's Adi again on a direct snap this time. He ran through the initial tackle of Will Fox, pick up a couple. You know, that's a rem reminiscent of an old single wing uh, formation that the uh, Chicago Bears used to run in the 1930s. Not that either of us were around, Mark. but <laughs> No, I uh, was not. <laughs> I, I got people who think I was, but I was not. But they made that formation popular, putting a quarterback or a running back in the backfield and then that direct snap and kind of making sure that he runs the ball and, and gets those yards. There's back under, Hess back under center with the I formation. Wisher in motion again. This is Meyer. And... Well, we get a flag again, and another motion penalty. That's not going to make Coach Goodwin happy. Well, and I'm sure you know uh, if you're if you talk to him after the game with the lead like 28 nothing, there's probably not a lot that we think that they could improve upon. But he's going to see a lot of things on film. Penalties uh, are one of those things that just are uncharacteristic of Marion Local. And they haven't had an abundant amount, but yep. they've had enough to where I think it probably needs to be looked at this week. There's actually 7.23 here to go in the third quarter. We'll get our clock straightened around in a moment. Hess will go back under center. Second down at about 13. Here's Adi on the pitch. He's going to get inside the 30 that time. Well, Mark, you've seen it again. It's that cutback. You know, they're running they're running this play into the boundary, which means it's they're running it into the short side of the field. Everybody's moving that direction. It's that cutback that's really getting those uh, those uh, those yards, those extra yards. Is this what USC used to call student body right, student yes. body left, just yes. send everybody that way? Yeah. <laughs> Coach McKay and crew from Southern Cal, tailback you for a while. Here's Meyer. And he ran into a big pile of black jerseys before he could get to the 25. Well, this is a counter off of the jet sweep. They they 
tag blocked it, which means they pulled the, both the tackle and the guard and uh, tried to run the counter against it. And Evan Homan, he's just, you know, he's yep. just steady inside. He, he makes plays. He plays at a high level, and he plays with a lot of enthusiasm. 6'3", 275 is Evan Holman. He's a senior, and it's fourth down. Partington has come in to play uh, the blocking back position in front of Meyer. But they're going to pitch to Adi and run everybody to the right. Adi cuts inside, and right around the first down marker, I think he got it on the far side of the field. Yeah, it looks like the officials are uh, moving the chains now. It's going to get the first down. A uh, little, little sweep, a little pitch sweep that they really haven't run. It's, uh, I guess you call it, coaches would call it a rocket sweep. And uh, let uh, Adi just get out there and uh, just get enough yards to get that first down. It's a Union Bank first down. Union Bank is committed to you. It's the third first down they have picked up on this drive. They're on the 21-yard line of Coldwater. A little more than halfway through quarter number three. They're testing the shotgun this time. And we're going to get, get another flag. Well, we've had a lot of flags, so let's talk about our first call of each quarter. I see signs in Wapakoneta is the home of the business startup package. We are local, fast, and friendly. Check us at iCsigns.net. Back to the 26. It's the third motion penalty on this drive. They've overcome the first two. And that's the first time I've seen Coach Goodwin very politely question Mr. Official about, you know, what they're calling and what they're thinking there. And, you know, I mean, I think that it, it is kind of, it's got to be a little bit frustrating for the Flyers to, to rack up those, uh, those penalties. This is Adi. Cuts inside. It's still going. And inside the red zone down to about the nine-yard line. Such a good runner, and he's so good balance-wise. I mean, he stays on his feet. Uh, you see the cutback right there. Um, and, you know, what I love is I see linemen blocking downfield, uh, 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 top downfield, yep. rows downfield, uh, just making great plays. Our red zone sponsor is Decamp Farm Market, your one-stop shop since 1998 on State Route 128, eight miles south of Salina to the nine-yard line. First and goal from there. Partington again in front of Meyer, and this will be Meyer, and he runs right into the hands of, I think that was number eight, Broering. Yeah, uh, Jack Broering. He's made a lot of plays this year. He's a six-foot, 190-pound uh, safety senior for Coldwater, and uh, defensively has made a lot of good plays this year. He comes right off the edge and makes a really physical tackle. Which you got to be with Darren Meyer. You better tackle well, physical. You better you better technique uh, tackling too, because if you're standing up or you're not in, in the good position, you're going to get ran over. Second and goal from the eight. Meyer again, this time on the left hip. This will be Meyer on that counter, and he powered into the end zone again, didn't he, for the fourth sure time did. this evening. He just finds the end zone. I mean, he just does, and he comes up a little gimpy there. But, um, boy, what a what a really nice play call. And it's that tag scheme once again. You can see a great uh, kick-out block by uh, Luke Webker there, the guard, uh, really kicking it out. And then uh, uh, Meyer being able to slip inside of that uh, tackles uh, the lead block and get into the end zone. Touchdowns are presented by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business insurance, and more. And now for the PAT, which are sponsored by Wright State Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lightlake.wright.edu to apply today. And for the fifth time tonight, Bills bangs through the extra point. It's 35 now for the Flyers. Cavaliers have not scored yet. We'll be running clock when we come back. Our scoreboard is provided by Homans Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist. Member of the Wayne Insurance Group with locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. 35 for the Flyers, zero for the Cavaliers. We go running clock, and here are the rules. Officials charge timeout, change the possession, end of period, or a scoring play. And other than that, the clock is going to roll 
which really kind of cuts into a little bit of this preparation time we talked about that Coldwater might like for upcoming playoff games with their new quarterback. Yeah, I think as many plays as they can get right now, especially offensively, is going to be really valuable to them. The other thing is that um, it's, a, it's a good time to get some young guys out there mm. because they, they're going to be called upon here in the next several weeks to fill into those important positions as well. Well, once again, special teams coverage. Curtis Durer looking for a place to run and couldn't find one. He'll be short of the 20-yard line. Just so impressed by Marion Locals. Um, they're good at every facet of the game. There's just no weaknesses. I mean, they're solid offensively. Defensively, I don't know if I've seen a better team. I mean, they are, they are outstanding, lights out. But just strong special teams-wise, too. Um, just solid everywhere, Mark. Well, there's 3-12 to go in this one. You know you've got uh, playoff games coming up for the next several weeks, probably the, perhaps the next six weeks. At some point, you want to start getting some guys out of the game too, don't you? Yeah, and you're probably looking at the end of the third quarter, um, not to, to look ahead, but you know maybe starting to mix guys in, especially with the running clock. This game's going to go quick uh, yeah. if, the, if, if Coldwater doesn't get on the board. Here's Braylon Hardiman with a run on first down. He gets about five for number four. The 5'10 junior goes 155. Did pick up five to the 22. Well, and I think if you're if you're coach uh, coach Otten at this point, um, you know I, I feel like you, you could walk away from this game feeling pretty dejected, but. You know, at the same time, I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I've been impressed with Braylon Harlem at quarterback. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, he's really been uh, poised and has done a lot of great things. Wow. Coming off the edge that time and knocking that one down and gobbling up was Drew Seitz, the 6'2", 225-pound end, and he just gobbled that one up. Well, they're bringing heat. I mean, they are bringing it. You can see him come off the edge. And, again, I think it's, uh, you know, it's really difficult to pick up all the different blitzes that Marion Local is going to throw at you. It's a 6'2", 205 pounder, was pretty active young man too. He's not just just a you know a big guy playing defensive end. Oh, he can move. He does. So we're looking at third and five for the Cavaliers as they go trips right. Parliament will look, guns it over the middle, he's knocked down again. Yeah, that's Nick Ranley. I mean, Nick, both those guys. I mean, they they just they have this uh, these outside linebackers. You know, size-wise, they're, they're tall. they got a nice size, yeah. but they're not overwhelming, you know, weight-wise. But they just play so athletically. And you can see Ranley there just really uh, read the eyes of Harlem Mert. And as soon as he, he threw the ball, he made sure he got both hands up and, and made a nice play. And you can see the Marion local faithful loving that one. Well, for the second time here in the third quarter, it'll be three and out. As back into punt will be Justin Kalp. Partington comes up the middle. That punt goes up in the air. Into the wind this time. Fair catch will be signaled and uh, caught by Adi, but will do so on the plus side of the field with just 48.8 to go here in quarter number three. TV 44 is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. Would you donate $40 to thank you for 40 years of local broadcasting in this region? You can donate online at WTOW.com backslash donate or call 419-339-4444. You imagine in those 40 years, Mark, the impact that they've made it for eternity. I mean, the people who have uh, given uh, generously to this station and the people who have been in, uh, impacted by the, the incredible word of Jesus Christ, it's uh, it's just a, it's an amazing thing. Absolutely. Here's the quick pitch headed to the right side of the formation's laws. And he gets knocked down as he gets close to the 40. If you have not seen Station Identification, it is one of the best uh, DVDs, the documentaries. I'm not sure what the proper term is. It is outstanding work. And speaking of outstanding work, we have reached the end of quarter number three. Back with quarter number four after this. You're watching High School Football, WSN. Our first call of each quarter of the night has been sponsored by IC Signs in Wapakoneta, the home of a business startup package. We are local, fast, and friendly, and you can check us out at iCSigns.net. Very local will take uh, the first possession of quarter number four here on uh, the 40-yard line of the Cavaliers. They'll be looking at a second and about four. 
And they still have their uh, starting crew in here. Probably for another drive. Yeah, and I think it's 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 one of those things that they've probably been us in these situations a lot this year. And so these guys do need to get time playing four quarters. There's going to come a moment when in the playoffs they're going to be in a close game. They're going to need them. They're going to need that condition to play all four quarters. And so I don't think it's a, it's a bad uh, idea for Coach Goodwin to get these guys playing a little bit later in the game. Proving why our director, producer, Ben Reif, is one of the best in the business. He got the best side of both of us here <laughs> at this particular break. Even got Lexi in the picture, too. Yeah, they did. She's they got Lexi here beside us. Great crew that we have working for us on a daily basis here at WSN, including those guys who were outdoor for soccer on Tuesday night in that brutal weather we had. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It was it was rough. I thought, you know, if we see this Friday night, Mark, I, <laughs> I might have to hide out here up in the press box, but we got fortunate, you know, with this weather. But, boy, that was, that was rough. A little bit different formation. Lows is in the uh, fullback and the tailback position behind Meyer. This is Busher in motion. And Laws will get the carry this time as he goes left tackle. And he gets down to about the 35-yard line. Drew's a 180-pound sophomore. Yeah, I have this feeling we'll hear, hear his name a lot the next few years. And, and now's a really good time to get him some carries just to kind of to make sure he's, uh, he's in tip-top form for the next several weeks as well. Union Bank first down, that gets it to the 35-yard line. Of course, we are in this running clock situation here, as you can see on our scoreboard. Well, we've got volleyball this week. It's district volleyball week. The matches that are played Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday will air on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday next week. And, of course, a big playoff football on Friday next weekend. Tackle brought down from behind by Miles Potcotter on the short run that time. Yeah, and a week ago, Miles Potcutter was our Stolle Insurance uh, player of the game. Just plays with a high motor, talked to Coach Otten after the game, and he just said, you know, he's a sophomore, and uh, they have a lot of high hopes for him. But uh, the biggest thing was he makes every single play at practice. John, all the uh, playoff games, the first two weeks were at home, and they're all on Friday night. Uh, coaches like that, I guess? Yeah, coaches like that. And, you know, I think that the biggest issue probably for the OHSAA is finding officials, yeah. as you would know. But um, – but yeah, coaches like they, they like routine. They don't the Saturday things kind of throw everybody off, and no one you know likes the battle of college football. The snap is low. Hess picks it up, makes the first guy miss, and then tries to get to the edge and cannot. He gets knocked down on the far side by AJ Harlemant. Back to the 40-yard line we go. Yeah, and I wasn't sure if he was down. I mean, I agree. He kept running and. I don't know if he, he his knee went down on, on A.J. Harlem. We'll see there. Uh, yeah, it looked like his knee yeah. may have went down there at the very end, but that was close. Official had a good look at it anyway, so back we go. Third and 15. Boy, that's not a number we have called when you're wearing a white jersey this evening. <laughs> no, this might be the, uh, the the longest amount that they've needed to get a first down not, tonight. Not many negative plays this evening. Had a couple penalties that have taken them backwards, but not many negative plays. This is Meyer in the backfield with Hess. He's going to look to throw. Wants to throw it back to this side of the field, and it's caught. What a catch. Put it right into the hands of Mike Mitchell Randley. What a play that was. Yeah, that's a really well-designed play, and they've run some rollouts uh, in these third-down situations so far, and I like what they did there. They, they took Mitchell Randley and put him in that slot position and then just ran him across the field and, and really cleared out the area and he left him wide open. And he actually makes a really nice catch he to get did. the first down. Pretty nice pass, though, too. You're rolling right. you got to lift loft it over that linebacker there. And the guy, your teammate, makes a good catch. To the 22-yard line, a Union Bank first down. That's all athletic ability, Mark. That's yeah. not something you can really coach. This time, number 44 and 45 are in the backfield. That's Bet Brenton Seitz and Parker Hess. Ball carrier that time was Benton Seitz. He is a six foot, 170 pound, 75 pound sophomore. Well, these are some names you're going to hear in the future. These are some guys that uh, Coach Goodwin's going to try to get some carries here and get some experience under the lights on a big game on a Friday night. And uh, there's guys that inevitably here in the next few weeks, they're going to have to step up and, and fill those voids. I always feel like at this time of the year, you're really no longer a sophomore. You're, you're about a junior. You played your yeah. sophomore season, you know. And so they're going to start counting on these guys for, for things ahead. Man in motion is Holscher. This will be a pitch. 
Parker Hess trying to get to the sideline, to the edge, and he's going to get knocked down inside the 20. Goes down hard. I'm looking down on the field in front of us, and there's Marcel Blasting game with his foot in a, in a cast, and he's in a wheelchair right now. And you know he wants to get back on the field. They say three to five weeks, which you know, he could be back before the season comes to an end. Yeah, and I, and I hope that happens. Yes. I hope that uh, you know, we're going to hope and pray for that three weeks. Um, such a such a fun player to watch and you know been able to to watch Coldwater several times this year and he is the leader of the team he's kind of the the energy that they they get behind and he's really uh, the one that I think brings them the confidence so we'll be hoping and praying that he can get back on that field soon everybody wants the seniors to finish out their senior year and then not sitting over here in a cast like we see him right now cutting inside is Hess trying to get to the first down sticks Ninth play of the drive coming up. And he got to about the 11, which is very close to the first down. It's going to be short by a yard. Must be about the 12-yard line then where he's at. And, and this is this is primarily getting a lot of sophomores some touches here. You can see these guys um, in, in the line uh, pretty much is the same line that we've seen most of the game, but some of these young guys getting an opportunity to, to, to get on the field and, and make some noise tonight. Partington's in to be the blocking back again. Hess with the carry, and he will just plow forward. That will be a Union Bank first down as he takes the football to about the, let's see where they put it down at, uh, just outside the 10. And now all of those Marion local starters come out, and they start celebrating a league championship on the far side of the field. Well, to win the MAC is special. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, you know, what other league that is known all across the state? I mean, if you, if you say the MAC, Northeast Ohio, Southeast Ohio, Southwest Ohio, everyone knows about the MAC. And to be MAC champions this often is just incredible. Well, this will be the seventh consecutive year that they have won or tied for the MAC championship. And in this league, that is something. On the sweep action, gets knocked down about the 11 yard line. Coldwater has won 19 MAC championships. That is more than anyone. This will be the 16th by Marion Local. And if you want to go back, every year since 2011, either a Coldwater team or a Marion Local team has been uh, a MAC champion. Now, a few years they tied someone else in that, but uh, one of their names has been on the trophy every year since 2011. Talk about consistency in two programs. 5 10 to go, 11th play of the drive. Second down and 10. Here's a handoff. This will be Parker Hess. Neglected to mention that the new quarterback is Dylan Dams. He is a freshman. Yeah, a lot of new faces out there right now. Oops, not Dylan Dams. Excuse me, that was seven. Justin Knopf, sorry. Yeah, a lot of new faces out there right now. and. Um, a lot of guys that have probably done a lot of cheering this year, you know, for the uh, the older guys, and uh, they're getting some opportunities yeah, to, to play. Get, getting beat up a little bit in practice. Yep. <laughs> Playing yeah. against those, the, <laughs> that first line group. I mean, what better way to practice yeah, than oh to go against goodness. this first team all the time, you I think know? It'll make you better. <laughs> There's Nos bobbled the football, and all those orange bean bags come flying in. I, I hate to, to make a joke, but, you know, it's funny how every official throws their beanbag. Uh -oh. I mean, you know, you're 20 yards away and you throw the beanbag Yeah. <laughs> I kind of I thought the beanbag was supposed to go where the ball was yeah. you know, at, but <laughs> I guess not, you know. My, my favorite, uh, John, are those back judges who take that yellow flag and can chuck it about 30 yards. <laughs> Some of those guys have pretty good arms back there. The fumble was recovered by Coldwater. And so they will stop this Marion local drive and take over on their own six yard line. Here's the play again. Just kind of a mishandle to snap. And I couldn't tell who jumped on the football at the bottom of the pile, but somebody wearing a black jersey was, and they will get one more possession. Let's see who they send out to be their quarterback this time. It looks like it's going to be Braden Blockberger. He is a, a sophomore, and he wears number 15. Yeah, and talked to Coach Otten last week, and he said that uh, that uh, Braden uh, uh, Blockberger there, um, actually a real nice quarterback, somebody they're excited for here in the futures, but has been in injured a lot this year and hasn't had the practice time. And that's kind of the reasoning for Braylon Harlemer to come in and play right now, but you're going to see Blockberger get some time here to, 
to get some reps. Well, the, the two backfield people with him are Kenny Bailey, who held, held that carry, and Mason Link, who wears number 37. So they uh, had a couple of a carry right there that will go to Kenny Bailey. We'll have our style highlight hustle award winner this, when this one comes to another uh, end, and plus a few other pre-game post-game thoughts when this ends up. Second run by number 33, Bailey. And even though there's a lot of new guys in on both sides, you can you can see that there's still that intensity. Like you said, they they want to play and they want to they won't play a JV game tomorrow. So this is it. This is their opportunity to, to play. You know, go against the Marion local, go against the Coldwater. So it's kind of fun to see these young guys get after it here for these few minutes. Those two running plays lost a yard, so it's third and eleven from the five with the quarterback. And the snap will go back to Blockberger. And he throws it out. Catch on the sideline. The pass was completed. Zabrita. And that got a Union Bank first down. Congratulations. Nice pass completion. Yeah, nice arm by Blockberger. Has uh, some nice composure. Uh, throws a nice ball. You can see why they're excited about him in the future. 13-yard pickup to the 18 as we approach the two-minute mark here. Balen Brock Blockberger again, 5'10", 145, sophomore quarterback. And he will hand off this time to Mason Link. John, how many times do you see that uh, sophomore quarterback who is 5'10", 145 in his junior year? He's 6'1", and about 160, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's in, especially over here in Mercer County. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, they, they, they grow them, and they, uh, <laughs> uh, you, they come back after a year in the weight room and a year at the mom's uh, dinner table, and uh, they look like a different kid. Just natural age and maturity that takes place from that sophomore, junior, senior year. Second down, this time it would be about 11 this time. Quick pitch, this will go to Link, and he will get snowed under right about the 20-yard line, pick up about three for him. Knocked out of bounds, but the clock continues to run in our running clock days. You know, you hear so much about Coach Goodwin, um, but you know, you got to recognize his staff, and you know, one of the coaches that I you know, like to recognize, Coach Dan Koenig, Defensive yep. coordinator is also the athletic director. Just does a fantastic job. And, and believe me, I've worked with Dan for years and no finer human out there. Just a wonderful guy, great coach. And it's really it's really impressive to see his defense. In a league full of good athletic directors, he and Eric Goodwin are about as good as it gets around Absolutely. the state. In motion, this handoff goes to Ethan Elander. Ethan gets uh, about back to the line of scrimmage. And that may well be the final play of this one. An explosive first half when they took a 28 to nothing lead. The Marion local Flyers add a touch touchdown in quarter number three. They take a 35 to nothing win over the Coldwater Cavaliers and they will celebrate an MAC championship. You see the team shaking hands right there and the coaching staffs as well. John Zerby and I'll be back in a moment with a post game show. You're watching high school football on WOSN. We're back at Cavalier Stadium where the Marion Local Flyers have won their 16th MAC championship, their seventh in a row with a 35 to nothing win over the Coldwater Cavaliers. And right there on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see the sports report. Season 18 of the sports report is underway right now at 10 p.m. this evening. You'll have Patrick Cameron there with highlights from games all across the area. So stay tuned at 10 p.m. and you'll be able to see the sports report at Patrick Cameron on WTLW. John, you know, uh, we have talked about Stolly Hustle Award winners, and our Stolly Hustle Award winner, you can catch all these highlights on WSN YouTube page. Tonight we're going to go with Drew Seitz. I mean, Drew Seitz is everywhere. I mean, playing that outside linebacker yeah. position, he's not going to show up in the newspaper or on the, the highlight reel because he's just consistently making play after play after play, doing his job. But Drew Seitz all over the place, causing havoc at that outside linebacker position and really is it's personifies what the Stolly and her Insurance Hustle Board is all about. Well, he's a 6'2", 225-pound senior. His team just pitched their seventh shutout in 10 games, and that's in a max schedule. 
Well, and, and, and not only that, but Coldwater, who's averaged 38 points yeah. a game. I mean, pitching this shutout is just crazy. And then I think, you know, overall they've given up, you know, 30 points this entire season. Right. Just don't hear statistics like that very often. Yeah, John, be before we get out of here, though, the Coldwater Cavaliers, big injury last week. Obviously, Marcel Blassing game didn't get to play this evening. And you just go, well, they're going to be really disappointed. They're going to be depressed. But tomorrow morning when those kids walk in the workout facility, kids are resilient and they'll be back next week at Coldwater. Yeah, and Coldwater, their community, their school, that's a resilient town itself. So they're going to get up tomorrow. The sun will rise. It will come up. And they'll be able to prepare for next week's game. And you watch them bounce back next week and really uh, show what cold water football is all about. Well, they're going to be 9-1 for Coach Otten. And he's a winner. He'll have them back for the playoffs next week. Coach Goodwin, they're going to go 10-0 and win yet another MAC championship headed into the playoffs next well, week as well. It's just impressive what they've done, and, and you know, they can look at this game and, and take a lot from it good, but also look at some things that they need to improve on. I'm yeah. sure that there's things that Coach Good wasn't happy with, but just hats off to them on an incredible season, um, and not only this season, but what they've put together over the years. Well, we want to thank the athletic director here, Mr. Eric Goodwin. He did a great job. A lot oh. of media here this yeah. evening. It always treats us very well when we come down here. We want to thank our crew as well. Our director and producer is Benjamin Reif. Replay is Megan Sherrick. Our camera people, Lexi Waddle, Cassie Driscoll, Caitlin Henderson, Clay Jordan. We want to thank them, plus all of our sponsors this evening who helped put this live telecast together. We want to thank you for watching as well. The Marion Local Flyers win a seventh league championship in a row. They will stay number one. They will stay undefeated at 10-0 with a 35-0 win over the Coldwater Cavaliers. You've been watching high school football at WLSA. We're back at Cavalier Stadium where the Marion Local Flyers have won their 16th MAC championship, their seventh in a row with a 35 to nothing win over the Coldwater Cavaliers. And right here on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see the sports report. Season 18 of the sports report is underway right now at 10 p.m. this evening. You'll have Patrick Cameron there with highlights from games all across the area. So stay tuned at 10 p.m. and you'll be able to see the sports report at Patrick Cameron on WTLW. John, you know, uh, we have talked about Stolly Hustle Award winners and our Stolly Hustle Award winner. You can catch all of these highlights on WSN YouTube page. Tonight we're going to go with Drew Seitz. Yeah, I mean, Drew Seitz is everywhere. I mean, playing that outside linebacker yeah. position, he's not going to show up in the newspaper or on the, the highlight reel because he's just consistently making play after play after play, doing his job. But Drew Seitz all over the place, causing havoc at that outside linebacker position. And really is it personifies what the Sally and her insurance hustle board is all about. Well, he's a 6'2", 225-pound senior. His team just pitched their seventh shutout in 10 games, and that's in a max schedule. Well, and, and, and not only that, but Coldwater, who's averaged 38 points yeah. a game, I mean, pitching this shutout is just crazy. And then I think, you know, overall they've given up, you know, 30 points this entire season. Right. Just don't hear statistics like that very often. Yeah, John, be before we get out of here, though, the Coldwater Cavaliers, big injury last week. Obviously, Marcel Blassing game didn't get to play this evening. And you just go, well, they're going to be really disappointed. They're going to be depressed. But tomorrow morning when those kids walk in the workout facility, kids are resilient, and they'll be back next week at Coldwater. Yeah, and Coldwater, their community, their school, that's a resilient town itself. So they're going to get up tomorrow. The sun will rise. It will come up, and they'll be able to prepare for next week's game. And you watch them bounce back next week and really uh, show what Coldwater football is all about. Well, they're going to be 9-1 and for Coach Otten, and he's a winner. He'll have them back for the playoffs next week. Coach Goodwin, they're going to go 10-0. and and win yet another MAC championship headed into the playoffs next well, week as well. It's just impressive what they've done, and and you know they can look at this game and, and take a lot from it good, but also look at some things that they need to improve on. I'm yeah. sure that there's things that Coach Good wasn't happy with, but just hats off to them on an incredible season, um, and not only this season, but what they've put together over the years. Well, we want to thank the athletic director here, Mr. Eric Goodwin. He did a great job. A lot oh. of media here this evening. Yeah. It always treats us very well when we come down here. We want to thank our crew as well. Our director and producer is Benjamin Reif. Replay is Megan Sherrick. Our camera people, Lexi Waddle, Cassie Driscoll, Caitlin Henderson, Clay Jordan. We want to thank them, plus all of our sponsors this evening who helped put this live telecast together. We want to thank you for watching as well. The Marion Local Flyers win a seventh league championship in a row. They will stay number one. They will stay undefeated at 10-0 with a 35-0 win over the Coldwater Cavaliers. You've been watching high school football at WLSA.